coming from a specific current revenue source. So we'll probably be seeing that negative carry on throughout the year. Um, just note that that is from fund balance. And, and maybe if you'd like, I can maybe do this a little bit differently, showing maybe current budgeted revenue dollars, current budgeted expenditure dollars, and then the fund balance um, portion of that that we're using to fund those. Um, so you're not seeing that big negative number in the back. Um, but just so you to know that that's, that's what that is. And then also in addition to that, um, routine maintenance of $90,000 uh, from the last quarter we didn't receive until January, so that's not included uh, in the current revenues. Um, but the, the other majority of that portion, you'll see as we look at the next page with the major and local streets um, in both the construction projects, uh, you're seeing you know, 127000 uh, in the major street and 157000 in the local street, so that's driven from transfers from fund balance. Um, and then the other, the highlight on the major street uh, portion is the snowfall. Um, with the November snowfall, we, we pretty much hit our snowballing budget. Now we do get um, funds from the state for that, so <coughs> as, we, as we spend funds for snowfall, um, snow maintenance in the major streets, um, we get funds allocated back to us from the MDOT. Um, not 100%, but, but a good portion. Um, so. On the page three, um, I just highlighted the <coughs> SAW grant. We received the SAW grant. Uh, we did not budget for it. And you'll see the expenditures were separated from between sanitary and storm. Um, we've done some work in there, and we've got reimbursements for those as well, but that is a 100% grant for the expenditures. Um, in those line items. And then page four, again, the library fund usually runs the negative, negative um, throughout the year, um, receiving the majority of the funds after the fiscal year end. Um, and then some of the other funds you can see there are mainly in line um, with the budget. Uh, next report is the cash balance report. Um, I think it's significant. To report there, all the cash balances are healthy. Why is the civic center at 98 percent they uh, actually record their tax revenue and, and other revenue on a cash basis. Um, the rest of the city, uh, because well, the civic center is a business type entity, they've chosen that they want to see their cash, um, their, their income as it comes in. Again, our summer taxes are the majority of the revenue, um, which we get right in the first three quarters. So throughout the year, they see a huge, again, bottom line throughout the year it kind of evens out as we go on. But the rest of the city, we set it up so we have an idea of what our 12 month um, revenue is going to be for property taxes and then we divvy that out to the financials on a monthly basis. Kind of evens it out so you see it on an even basis. But they've chosen to do their financials on a cash basis. <laughs> It's just a reporting, I guess a reporting, you know, they, their board chose that they want to see it. Their revenue shown as it comes in instead of evenly. Um, right. It's easier to look at. So from the, I guess just the, from, the, from the general fund standpoint, you know, instead of showing $1.5 million in revenue right in the first quarter, um, you see a huge net income throughout the year. Uh, kind of know what that number is going to be, and we just even know a couple months we kind of get us a snapshot of where are we at this point in time. And we know we're going to spend all the <coughs> revenue throughout the year, um, but it just kind of doesn't, just doesn't skew the financials to say you know, we're in great shape. And,
see the place on file and look for the cash report. Second. Check records to report. Well, we didn't do the cash report. Yeah, that was part of the That's part date. Of the we just sort of skipped it. Okay. All right. Well, I will make a motion then that we approve the monthly check register report. Second. Motion by Commissioner Seymour, second by Commissioner Tower, to approve the monthly check register report. Any further discussion or concerns on this item? Roll call. Seymour. Yes. Sam. Yes. Tower. Yes. Care. Yes. Program. Yes. Item F, approval of the agenda and any changes we need to be aware of. Motion by Commissioner Tyler, second by Commissioner Sue to approve the agenda as presented. Any further discussion? All those in favor, aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item G, citizens wishing to address the commission on items not on the agenda. A three minute. Oh, nice. Item G, citizens wishing to address the commission on, uh, on items that are on the agenda. A three minute limit, please. So, items that are on the agenda. Okay, item H. <clears throat> Citizens wishing to address the commission on items that are not on the agenda. Three minute limit, please. <coughs> so my notes here. Walter Robinson's here. I've been coming to the commission meetings on and off for about two of the last three years. And one thing I noticed that it's hard for you people do not hold people responsible for their actions with the city of costing businesses costing me city taxpayer money and anguish and hardships it, it's um how can i see it with, with the past sewage projects up there in newport up there in nori there's mistakes been made and our city manager says pay everybody pay everybody a good example First National Street on the east side of Newport School. First National Street that was raised about maybe what foot, foot and a half, and on the east side, of, east side of First National Street, the sidewalk, the sidewalk looks like a skateboard course. I mean, it, it didn't look like that. I mean, it's up and down, up and down on the east side. There. I don't know why. That never looked like that before. It was because of the street was raised. Those people had problems getting into their garages. On Bird Street. That's on the west side of Newport School this past spring. That water came down off the top of the middle down Bird Street to Geneva. It was like a lake down there. That never happened. That never happened on that street until this project was done with the engineering that was done. Somebody made a mistake. There was mistakes been made. I mean, that, the water was a foot deep in there when that water came down off that hill this spring. There were sewers not connected. People had people had wastewater in their basement. Would you like to have wastewater in your basements? Of course not. It was disgusting. And there's and people are right now in Oregon and Newport still getting extra groundwater that they never had in their basements after the sewage project. I know they're gonna say the ground was disturbed. The ground was disturbed. But in the 60s, mid-60s, there, there's people old enough to remember this in here. When they put the gas lines, the natural gas lines up there in Newport and Oregon, they drilled and they blasted. I was in Newport School. When they blasted, you could feel it shake in Newport School in the classrooms. I mean, it's our city manager's telling the He said, "Hey Wagner, hey Coleman, everything's done fine. Everything was not done fine. There's still water going into these people's houses with this with the storm sewer. I mean, it's disgusting the, the problems. And and on and on uh, the other project that was just done on the north side of the highway." Florence Street. I mean, right behind the theater. It's crooked. There was no action here because Mike Foley wasn't here. He had somebody else here. Then maybe go to Celia Street. That monitor that was there. Use order. That monitor that was there. Use order. That order. That monitor should be gone. That, the only time, the only reason why that monitor was gone because Rosalind needed it. Who who let them put that monitor there? The Templars who are 90 years old. In order to get out of their house because of the amount of dirt that was there, they had to go across the street, across the neighbor's yard to get out of their out of their out of their driveway to the grocery store. Instead of going directly east on Celia Street. The amount of dirt should have never been put there. Nobody held responsible for that. 
Nobody held responsible for that. I mean, there, there's our city manager. Pay everybody. Pay everybody. There was problems there. Let's let's go to Florida. Let's go to Leonard Street. The 1100 block is exactly where it's supposed to be. The 1200 block is about two feet north. The 1300 block is two feet north. It's crooked. Poor, I mean, what kind of engineer? I mean, uh, I mean, the, the street was straight as an arrow before the project was done. Now it's crooked. That those two blocks are north. Why? Nobody seems to know. Is it going to be fixed? And who's going to pay for this? And that 1300 block of letter was blocked for one whole month. One whole month. There was also on the north, on the north side of Leonard on the 1300 block. These people could not get into their house. They had a parking corner by their cars by Kmart. Adele Vanderberg, she, she's 80 years old. She had a park on the side of the street too. She could not get in her driveway. Why was that street blocked for one whole month? It was, it was, it was disgusting. And who gave permission to Rutzlaw for the extension on that project? That project was supposed to have been done at a certain date, and who gave it? Why wasn't there a public hearing on this? Why wasn't there brought in front of the commission? Who gave, who gave, the, who gave the okay? Was it our manager, Scott Erickson, or was it Coleman Engineering? There should be answers to these questions. That cost, the, that cost of the city thousands of dollars by that extension. That cost of the people in that neighborhood, neighborhood paying anguish. It was just, it, it's terrible for what happened. And um, there's another guy out there. His sewer, he's on the street, wasn't connected. He's up fishing up there in Canada, Lake Winnipeg. How can you how can you not connect a person's sewer into the line? That happened up in Jessenville and that happened in Oregon. The same thing. What kind of inspectors does home and engineering hire? That floor street, that 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 letter street, there's only four houses on that block. That's all that's on that block. Hey, that's the way it is. I mean, and you, and you keep your money Coleman engineering for this faulty workmanship? Look, look up by Newport School. Talk to these people that have water and sewer in their basements because these sewer lines were not connected to the lines. It's disgusting. It's, it's just disgusting. I mean, if you keep your water, I mean, someone has to, you, you people got to start holding people responsible for for their actions in the city that are hurting people, that are costing the people thousands of dollars. And one other thing is Elaine Erickson with that, with that library money. Why is she still employed? $15,000 she costed us. She costed that library. Thank you and, and you've never, never held her responsible. She should have been fired a long time ago. Thank you. I'd like to say something about the library. I would like to reply to that. Go ahead. I mean, you're, what, do you say, what do you say about Elaine? Because of her attitude, that that money is Ironwood Township's money. Oh, that money is Paul, not. That money is not. Paul, Paul, this is not the time. No, to no he asked me. He asked me. Okay, ask that money is not Elaine Erickson's money. That whether you not whether you agree with that appointment to that library, that money was Ironwood Township's money. Ironwood Township appointed that person, whoever he whoever he was, and that's the person that should have been appointed, and he and she did not want. That person to be appointed on that board, and that's what happened. And, it, it, and she caused that money to be lost. Fifteen thousand dollars. You run a small business. You have so many cost you fifteen thousand dollars. That person would have been fired. Okay. That person would have been fired a long time ago. Well, your comments are noted. Um, I believe this isn't like a point where I'd like to get any kind of argument or discussion. This isn't what this is for. This is just to hear what the community has to say. Sometimes you come to these meetings and you fire off 20 different questions that the commission is not ready to answer. I can't tell you what happened on Leonard Street or Cecilia Street just sitting here right, here right now. You know, we, we go through the due process and we try to rely on our city attorney and city manager and the engineers involved in the project. And you, you are more than welcome to come and sit into the offices with, with the mayor, the city commission, any one of the folks that help and discuss some of these projects one-on-one. -on -one. I believe even discussing the um, issue with the public library, I, I, I think you, you are a little off base, but this isn't where I want to get into some kind of discussion. But I, I will you know, be more than welcome to sit down with you and Elaine to talk about it. But thank you for your comments, and they are noted. Anybody else? Okay, I presentation. Dennis Hewitt, Assessor and Building Inspector, um, 2014 Building Permit Hearing. Permits for last year. Um, we had a total of 102 building permits 
taken out um, parts made about 32 uh, uh, it to be 32 less than last year and it's dropped like you know for the past four or five years it's, it was lower just there was no commercial big commercial jobs normally every year we can <coughs> So again, it's really looking at capital projects. 
that are out there, you know, bricks and mortar type projects, um, things that are going on in streets, water and sewer, the community development projects, different building projects we have throughout the different properties and buildings that the city owns. Um, and again, it's, it's mandated by law through the planning, planning statute um, to follow this process. And with that, I would answer your questions. Questions? Questions? Yes. Thank you. Um, can we action on adopting the city of the capital improvement plan? I'll make a motion to adopt the capital improvement plan as described by MJ. Second. Motion by Commissioner Simo, second by Commissioner Kayer to adopt the capital improvement plan as described by item J. Any further discussion or concerns on this item? We'll come. Sim. Yes. Tower. Yes. Kayer. Yes. Sima. Yes. Parker. Yes. Item K. Discussing the consent of light abatement expense associated with approval at 412 West Large and set a date to determine cleanup expense responsibilities. Um, these items, items K through items N, are for the property that we abated the light on in the summer of 2014. This first initial step bringing this to you guys is to get your approval to move forward. It was the itemized detail list in your information package showing the box for each property. Um, we're gonna we need to recommend at least from city staff that the full amount be charged for property during this time. Um, this this is not the meeting where you guys decide the you know the amount with the owner that would be the next time we bring it to you. So this is just the initial step to bring it to the commission for first review to let us know if it wants to continue to move forward with these abatement charges and to get moving forward to the assessment, special assessments. So we can answer any questions that you guys have. More of a general question of the labor costs. Are they, the, the, the amount that we charge for employee is based on Wages plus benefits, I'm guessing. It, it's, it's each individual's wage and benefit that was there. All right, that's my own question. Well, I think it's important that we move forward with this. Um, you know, I, I think we're taking some nice strides in, in addressing our blight in our community. I would just like to ask at our next meeting, um, we did kind of cover this in prior meetings that um, we did do some sort of price adjustment and set some sort of uh, payment plan process. So when we do it again, um, we can provide that. And, and I think Chief, but they in the last that we did, you guys remove the equipment and fees with each. And if that's something you want to continue with when we move forward, we'll, we'll note that in our documentation. So what kind of action are we supposed to take on item K here, for example? You just take action to maybe set set the, set the next meeting that we do expense resolution? Right, we'll bring it back to you at uh, the next meeting, February 8th. Uh, we notice we'll go to the property owners to uh, hopefully encourage them to attend that meeting. And then at that meeting, um, we can set the rate and if you want to make adjustments to it, um, that'd be a time to do that. So the motion would be to this, it already says to discuss and consider, so I'm not sure. The motion should say we're going to assess this discuss assessing expenses at our next meeting for 412 Hart Street, Large Street. Right, you're looking at the rates, but uh, the action tonight is discussing the uh, expenses, which we're doing, mm -hmm. um, and then to set the date to determine the rate of expenses to responsibility, so. We're not setting a number, or we are setting a number? I'm at the next meeting, and recommend that be the time to talk with the property owner and then set the number. So then we, we would just address the expense resolution at the next meeting. That's the date we should choose. Mm -hmm. so, well, that will be my motion. Then. That we will address this at the next meeting. Second. Motion by Commissioner Simo, second by Commissioner Tower, to address the expense resolution on the February 9th meeting with the property described in item K. Any further discussion and concerns on this item? All those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item L, discuss the considered life abatement expenses associated with the cleanup at 430 Bonnie Street and set a date to determine cleanup expense responsibilities. Make 
a motion that we determine expense responsibilities for 430 Bonnie Street at our next meeting. Second. Motion by Commissioner Simo, second by Commissioner Tower to determine expense responsibilities associated with the property described in item L at our February 9th meeting. Any further discussion or concerns on this item? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item M, discuss and consider life abatement expenses associated with cleanup at 603 Cherry Place and set by date to determine cleanup expense responsibilities. I will make a motion that we determine cleanup expense responsibilities for 603 Cherry Place at our next scheduled meeting. Okay. Motion by Commissioner Simo, second by Commissioner Tower to address the Cleanup expense responsibilities for the um, property described in item M at our next meeting on February 9th. Any further discussion or concerns on this item? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> item N, discuss and consider light abatement expenses associated with cleanup at 208 East Michigan Avenue and set a date to determine cleanup expense responsibilities. <coughs> Determine the cleanup expense responsibilities for two of these East Michigan Avenue at our next regularly scheduled meeting. Second. Motion by Commissioner Simo, second by Commissioner Tower to determine the cleanup expense responsibilities for the property described in item 10 at our February 9th meeting. Any further discussion or concerns on this item? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item O, discuss and consider awarding bids for the sale of Ironwood Public Safety Seed property. Okay, we have been received. Uh, they were open uh, last week, and the uh, list is before you with the uh, five bidders. Is this money just going to go into the general fund, or could, could we could be your market for the drug fund? This, this actually has to go, I believe it has to go back to the drug fund. It is seized. There are certain items in there, and I'm not sure which ones. Um, Director DiGiorgio would have to know that. But there are certain items that you can see through the Giant process. Those funds would go back to Giant or anything that was specific. City of Ironwood, um, driven with just our uh, employees, I believe, just stays with the City of Ironwood and would go toward drug um, efforts. So at this time, I don't know which pieces of property are, are allocated. But once uh, I, I'll get that list from Director Giorgio so we know how much needs to go to Giant, how much stays with us. I'll make a motion to reward the bids for the sale of the property described in Idaho. Second. Motion by Commissioner Seno, second by Commissioner Tower to award the bids for the sale of Idaho Public Safety property described in Idaho. Any further discussion or concern in this item? Tower? Yes. Clear? Yes. Simo? Yes. Sam? Yes. Okay. Yes. Item P, discuss and consider warning bids for the sale of surplus office furniture and equipment. This is a state discussion for now, so we did receive multiple bids for a number of pieces, not even the exit itself. Here, did you want to touch base on the remaining pieces and what our attention to? Sure. Um, as you can see in the memo that I gave you that we received six bids for the for the items. There was no minimum bids. Um, and the remainder of the items, um, I would ask that the commission give offer them to a nonprofit organization or um, authorize us to dispose of them accordingly. And again, there's a couple of organizations, I think the DAP and uh, the Historical Society that shows some interest in the other stuff. And you can, uh, so if it's something they can use, um, we say about the disposal costs. And it really is the point where we're just looking to dispose of the remaining items. I'll make a motion we award the bids described in item P to authorize city staff to dispose of unsold items to a nonprofit of their choice. Second. Motion by Commissioner Simo, second by Commissioner Kane to award the bids for sale of um, surplus office furniture described in item P, P and offer um, no bid items to the non profit organization of the city staff. Any further discussion on this item? Do we call? Kane? Yes. Simo? Yes. 
table? Yes. Then? Yes. Power? Yes. Here. Yes. Item Q, manager, or mayor's appointment to board of review. At this time, I would like to appoint Terry Marinari um, to board of review, which will expire 12 31 17. I'll make a motion we approve the mayor's appointment. Second. Motion by Commissioner Simo, second by Commissioner Sim, to approve the mayor's appointment to the Board of Review of Gary Mariani, which expires 12 31 17. Any further discussion on this item? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item R, manager report. Uh, just a few items to touch base on. Uh, there is a lot in the hopper right now. It's going to be a busy summer, and yeah, things are moving forward, even though the summer winter is going to get here before we know it. So I'll just update on a few of the items. Um, the US2 project is moving forward. Um, DOT does have that out for bid. It should be phase two of the project. Uh, they're looking at uh, receiving those bids in early February. And then they'll identify a contractor to uh, do the work for them this coming summer. And once they've identified that contractor, then we'll work with DOT and set up a public informational meeting for the public that we've had in the past. It might be uh, all the general public and plus the business owners and walk through the contractor schedule. And, um, go through that, but it's been very uh, helpful in the past to do that. It'll be a very similar project to last year, full reconstruction, um, utilities, water, sewer, sidewalk on the north side, and uh, street lighting again on the north side. We're moving uh, some of our local projects forward also. Um, the first phase of the western, uh, what we're calling the Western Gateway Trail project, that's our local name. Um, you know, for bids, we just finished up the spec. We had to get some easements and uh, yeah, change a few things in the specification. But that is out for bid. We have a few open bids February 24th. Uh, we'll review those with the DNR once they come in and then uh, bring back a recommendation to the city commission. Um, as you probably saw from the press release, the, the uh, trail itself, going to Ironwood and Bell Isle, has now been made through a naming uh, contest that the DNR had. And you probably noticed that it's uh, called. Michigan's at Iron Bell Trail. So, Ironwood to Bell Island. So, starting in Ironwood, going to Bell Island. So, again, um, a nice name. It puts us on the map again um, for that, that uh, perspective. Uh, city staff has also completed uh, project specifications for the Monument Park playground structure, and that is up for Ms. Michael. So, we are um, looking to do it. Have uh, bids brought back uh, to us. We'll again review those with the DNR and bring those back to the City Commission for uh, consideration. And we're looking for, again, spring construction start on that project. Uh, staff is also working on uh, developing a plan and specifications for our local street paving project. Again, that'll be a big project uh, for this summer. And uh, a lot of effort going into that. Uh, we're going to get that out for bids this spring. Uh, we're also working concurrently. Um, the finance department is with local banks on the funding part of that. Again, uh, getting a, uh, a loan to the banks and then uh, paying that back through the government proceeds. So we those who are working concurrently together and uh, we'll get those back to the city commission um, for consideration here over the next uh, month or so. We've also sent out RFPs. Uh, we did receive funding from the urgent. Um, need grant funding to CDBG through the, through the state and federal government. And again, now uh, we have a few projects we've identified uh, that need to be uh, constructed this summer. It's replacing a couple blocks of water main. We received grant funding to do that. And um, we're required to go through the RFP process based on the funding agency's requirements. So those are out to consultants. We'll review those, bring those back to the commission with a recommendation here over the next few weeks. We've also received, uh, tying back again to the last year's big freeze, um, Section 19 funding, that's money through the state that helps uh, offset some of our expenses from last year, and that was $100,000. And Paul, you might get that funding in also. Correct. So, this is uh, okay. Yeah. And uh, again, now uh, we'll use that for some uh, additional water main replacements that we have to uh, make yet uh, this summer. Community Development, the Building Department, they're working on a grant for uh, demolition of uh, lighted properties. So they've sent out letters to various property owners that would be eligible for that program. It's the hardest hit light grant funding um, program that we're working with. And um, 
They've been meeting with a few of the property owners and are putting together that uh, package, if you will. So we put that uh, all for bids. Again, uh, we're probably a little ahead of the curve. We still have to go through training and we have to get the official grant uh, agreement back. But we're getting uh, all the ducks you know, lined up here. So as soon as um, the grant agreement's in place and the uh, training is provided, that we can move that forward. Uh, public safety, I went out and um, uh, advertising. There's an open position down at public safety um, to fill. Um, we had interviewed uh, last week and have hired Dan Thomas to fill the position. We will be starting on Friday, so it'd be nice to have him on board and um, uh, fill up the ranks down at public safety. Uh, the Safe Routes to School project. Uh, the project documents, the plans and specs have been completed. There's going to be a review this Thursday with the DOT on that project. And then the DOT will go up for bids for that project. Again, bids probably occurring sometime in April, May, again for another spring start um, on that project. The building next to the library, the one that's owned by the city, the old uh, Penny Studio building, and um, there's environmental remediation that needs to be done before it can be demolished. Again, the contractor has been hired to do that. That contractor will start this week, um, yes. probably later this week, Thursday. Uh, and, uh, taking care of some of the environmental issues out there. It'll be a few-day process, and then that'll be clean so that uh, as we move forward with demolition and bids and projects, that the environmental work will be completed. So you see a little activity down there um, later this week. And today we have received notice from uh, Senator Casperson's office um, regarding uh, wolf management issues. The City Commission has sent a resolution out to a lot of our state and federal legislators. Um, the Senator is having a video conference this Wednesday at 1130 um, at the Community College. Again, the state is looking at putting a resolution together, basically asking the federal government to put some controls in place to help manage the wolf populations. So uh, that's open to the public. They are looking for testimony. Uh, they're hearing on this. And then they would uh, uh, probably move forward some type of resolution to the federal government asking them to take some action on this. So again, your efforts are being heard. That's been out. I've got a number of calls back from a lot of our senators and uh, representatives at the state and federal level. We are aware of that. And, uh, we're on the radar screen. I'm asking for some assistance in that area. We're trying to make that happen. And that's the end of my report. Thank you. <clears throat> I don't ask other matters. I guess I'll just mention this isn't really city commission business, but um, the Smithsonian, the way we work project, is going to be started up in just a little over two months. People are working really hard on it, and I will actually give you guys <clears throat> a handout at the next meeting just to bring you up to speed on all of Good. And you'll start to see ads for it. You'll start to see more, more public awareness. I guess I would just like to note that um, I did attend my first uh, Board of Trustees meeting with Michigan Municipal League, and I did receive my orientation. And I think we'll have a, a responsibility or task with the city to educate the public on the details associated with the May 5th, 2015 sales tax and transportation ballot. I think that's a, a lot at stake, and we just have to make sure that the public gets the information so they can make a, um, a wider decision on the or whatnot. Something that we'll see in the future. That's my out. Item T, adjournment. Second. Motion by Commissioner Tyler, second by Commissioner Seymour to adjourn the next meeting.